Hey y'all, it's your girl Erica Bain back again with the sixth and final episode breakdown from Loki season one. Brought to you by EricaVane.com and the amazing television critic who has been breaking down this series for us, Riley. In the season finale, Loki and Sylvie finally meet the man behind the curtain who awaits them at the end of time. Was it just me or were they giving Wizard of Oz these? Anywho, if you want the full breakdown as well as additional Easter eggs you might have missed, what to expect in the series in the future as well as season two, then be sure to log on to ericavane.com and check out our articles as we are updating as new information presents itself. But now into the breakdown. One of the biggest complaints directed at both WandaVision and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, particularly the latter, is that they both had strong beginnings but failed to quite stick the landing in the end. Regardless of whether or not these are fair criticisms of those shows, there has been a great deal of discussion about if Loki would be any different or if Marvel simply doesn't know how to end the season of television. Third time's a charm after all. But with the finale now out, let's break it down and find out if Loki's ending is truly burdened with the glorious purpose. You see what he did there? <laughs> Out the gate, something I can certainly say that this series has over many of the MCU projects is just how visually stunning it is. Obviously, Marvel movies always look great, thanks to their top-notch visual effects, gotta love that Disney money. But what makes Loki stand out from many previous entries in the franchise is its unique visual style. This can be seen in the episode's opening as well as how we see time manifested showing all happening at once. As Loki and Sylvie enter the newly unveiled castle, they are met with a truly horrifying figure, a cartoon southern clock, Miss Minutes to be specific, who looks a little bit more deranged than the last time we saw her. On behalf of her master, the TVA mascot offers to give the two variants what they, both of them have always wanted power and happiness. Loki and Sylvie reject her offer, leaving them to deal with her master, called He Who Remains. Miss Minutes quickly visits Renslayer, giving her a set of files that he thinks will be of use to the TVA judge. Miss Minutes' proposal is just one stance of one of the major themes of the episode and the series as a whole. And just how much has Loki changed? Multiple times throughout the episode, Loki is presented with the opportunity to attain ultimate power but he rejects it every time. If nothing else, this cements the truth that Loki has truly changed for the better over the course of the series. As Loki and Sylvie explore their ruined citadel, the tensions continue to rise drastically, as does our anticipation for the truth. As the two of them begin to wonder if he who remains is even still alive, a door begins to slowly open, revealing the culprit behind the TVA. And the answer is... Some guy with a cape eating an apple. <laughs> but not just any guy with a cape eating an apple. That's Emmy Award nominated actor Jonathan Majors with a cape eating an apple. And if you've been following our Loki coverage, then you likely know the significance of the creator of the TVA being played by the star of Lovecraft Country, which HBO ridiculously canceled recently before the series received 18 nominations this week for an Emmy. If you want to know more about that developing story, and if Lovecraft Country Season 2 could potentially return on another network, be sure to go over to ericafane.com. We got you. But I can explain the significance of his casting. Majors was announced in December to be portraying the iconic Marvel's character Kang the Conqueror in the upcoming Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. We've heavily discussed in our Loki coverage that Kang is our expectation for the identity of who was behind the TVA. What we didn't expect, however, was to actually be correct. See, although he's never identified as Kang in the episode, Majus is indeed portraying an alternate version of the character in He Who Remains. A large portion of this episode is spent with He Who Remains monologuing to our heroes. Or are they villains? Well, He Who Remains would argue that they aren't really either, and neither is he. He explains that he created the TVA to prevent a multiversal war between the many different variants of himself. No multiverse, no war between them. And still order, no unending chaos. Basically, order versus chaos. The central theme of the series has always been this. Loki, a pure Asian of chaos at the start of this series, ends the season wondering if order is the way to stop the pain and suffering that would be the result of chaos. Unfortunately for them, Sylvie doesn't quite see eye to eye with him. Before we can get to that, let's check in on our good pal Mobius for a bit. Before Renslayer can leave, Mobius confronts his former friend about her betrayal, but Renslayer tells him that she feels betrayed by him, throwing their friendship away for a couple Loki variants. Mobius, having already convinced his fellow agents to see the truth, is ready to prune Renslayer before she quickly overpowers him, 
claiming to be in search of her own free will. Renslayer then leaves her office. I definitely wish we would have gotten a little bit more of Renslayer and Mobius in this episode. You can definitely expect more to come in season two. He who remains, well, you know what? Even if this version isn't technically Kang the Conqueror, we just gonna call him Kang from now on. He tells the pair that if they kill him, the multiverse will be recreated and the war will break out once again. Sylvie, not believing him, tries to kill Kang, but is stopped by Loki, who fears he is telling the truth. The two fight each other and come to an unfortunate realization. Sylvie trusts nobody and Loki can't be trusted. They may be variants of the same being, but they are too at odds to stay together in the long term. But this doesn't stop them from sharing a passionate kiss with one another before Sylvie can double cross Loki and send him back to the TVA. Now left alone with Kang, Sylvie kills him, but not before being left with the ominous, see you soon from Kang. Left unsatisfied, Sylvie sobs to herself as the timeline completely splinters, once again allowing the multiverse to take hold. After a moment of self-reflection and mourning, Loki quickly goes to find Mobius to inform him of the threat that they have created, but it turns out to be too little too late. Not only do Mobius and Hunter B-15 not recognize Loki, but the statues of the Timekeeper have been replaced by one large statue of Kang the Conqueror in its place. After this, all we are left with is the mid credit stinger confirming a second season. So to address the question that we posed at the beginning of this breakdown, did Loki season finale stick the landing? Yes, it did. Even though we would have loved to see a little bit more of Loki, Sylvie, Mobius, and Renslayer, it created a beautiful jumping off point for the second season, as well as giving us tons of information that we would need to know moving forward not only with Loki as a series but as we continue to, to traverse through the phases of Marvel and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I definitely think that this is going to help me a lot more once we start to see more content specifically getting back into Doctor Strange's world. But what did you think about the episode and the season as a whole? Tell me all of your thoughts, your questions, and your comments in the comment section down below. Now on to talk about Black Widow so if you haven't already go check it out in theaters and streaming on Disney Plus with premiere access right now. It's your girl Erica Vane breaking down all the hottest in television and film. Be sure to join the tribe, hit subscribe so that you do not miss a video. We are breaking down Black Widow over on ericavane.com so you can definitely go and read our review there. It will be linked in the description box down below. As more news arrives from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you can be sure that I will keep you updated. Until the next time, get into my Loki playlist right here and watch all of my Loki videos from this season, as well as my breakdowns of WandaVision and The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I'll see you in my next one. Bye!